How's it going, folks? Uh, Happy New Year. I know it's the 26th, of, well, it's the 26th of January for me now. Um, and so this is probably the first kind of official video we're doing for the channel. So I just thought I'd, I'd say Happy New Year to you. And also, um, just a shout out to Aaron, our friend on um, Charlie and Me, and just to say, I was watching your video this morning, um, the one you did in Ardmore, so just to say happy birthday to you, Aaron, I didn't realise it was your birthday. Happy birthday, and um, I like the addition of the drone. Um, it was good to see Deirdre as well in the distance. And But, um, you know, just happy birthday, and I hope it's all going well for you. Anyway, so, so what's the purpose of today's video? Let me see, how's that looking now? Okay, so the purpose of today's video is last year, actually, when we were away, we were up in Donegal, I think it was around March, maybe, and um, I did a video of the, the van after three years, and I just thought what I'd do is, I thought I would do uh, a similar video this time, um, now that the van is four years old. Uh, it actually is in and around four years now. I think it was the end of January when we got it. So just to say that um, it is four years now. So, okay, so what is going on? Just a, just a, I suppose, just a couple of things. The first thing is the mindset. Oh, well, the plan will be, okay, so the plan will be, what I'll do is I'll have a chat about my mindset around the van and do the interior of the van and then do the exterior and just to start to, the same thing again just to go around any kind of issues and any anything like that just to kind of cover it off i suppose a way to compare the van to anyone who has a van but also if people are considering buying a van and what you can do is you can throw your comments and questions down and you know send them on to me and what i'll do is i'll do my best to answer this is just a light just to help you see me the other thing was um just in relation to getting a new van um, we were considering, uh, actually, we did, I priced up a T6.1 and I sent it on to the VW dealership. Uh, interestingly, they never got back to me. But anyway, um, they probably he probably just assumed I was just tire kicking or something like that as well. So w what happened was, um, in, in the meantime, I've kind of been considering it. And Vanessa has said to me, what she's basically said is that... Um, you know, do we really need a new van at this stage and we'll be better off kind of waiting to get the T7. And, you know, when I saw the first T6.1, the, the rush of blood and the various things in it that they've changed and improved, I thought it would be nice to have. But in hindsight, um, I'm kind of thinking that if we are going to replace the van, it will be for a T7. Um, and also, I'm really not sure now at this stage of the day if I would actually replace the van. Uh, there was a commenter last year saying that it's not really about the van, it's about the experience in and around the van. And I have to admit, I do fully agree with that. And in hindsight, I'm kind of thinking, you know, would I be nuts to replace the van? You know, it's a lovely van, it's in perfect nick, and um, we're very happy with it now. So, okay, enough of that. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll just randomly go around the van. I'll try and do it in some kind of order. And the plan will be to kind of basically point the camera at something and then basically discuss it and then say what I think of the various things and to see if any changes, um, have, have, if there's any improvements or anything, any issues that we've had. The, the, last thing, the, the last thing I would say in and around having a van like this is over the four years we have gone through and the analogy that I like to use in the, the analogy that I like to use is um, it's the new shoe syndrome, you know, so how's that working out? Sorry, I'm just squashed down a little bit. So the, the it's the new shoe syndrome. You know, when you get new shoes, you're afraid of scratching them and scuffing. You know, I mean, when you're a kid, you're afraid, afraid of scratching and scuffing and damaging them anyway. And they're your new shoes. and You're so happy with them. And stuff. Well, at least that was me anyway. Maybe I was a weird kid. Um, and the van was a bit like that. Now, where are we now at this stage? I'd say the van has, has has morphed into the comfy pair of shoes that you have, that you're very happy with, that they're the kind of shoes you pull out and wear, and you're happy wearing them. And you don't mind them getting a little bit dirty and stuff like that, and you're prepared to clean them and look after them and everything like that. And that's where the van kind of sits now at this stage, after four years. We've made a few changes to, the, to, to how we travel. Psychologically as well, we've made a lot of changes. We went from having nothing in the van very little and then we slowly but surely built up a lot of stuff over time the main thing being we got the keela tree awning tent but since last year so in year three we have basically started to pull back 
And now going forward, so we've wild camped a couple of times and going forward our plan is to, you know, not to not to bring so much stuff. So next this year, this year it's Vanessa's 40th. So we're going to have a proper holiday um, as far as Vanessa's concerned. So that's a hotel. We'll be flying somewhere and staying in a hotel. She wouldn't, she won't spend her 40th birthday uh, in the van, she's told me. <laughs> um, so that's okay. But we do plan on doing lots of trips around Ireland and actually later in the year I'm hoping to get to Scotland. Um, and what the plan is, we're going to basically go up, get the boat between Northern Ireland and Scotland and then we're not going to book anywhere. We're just going to go up. We're going to drive around the Scotland in a counterclockwise um, sh- a pattern and make our way back to the port and then home and spend a week just driving around. And uh, no tents, nothing like that. Bring very little clothing and just basic. And we might stay in the odd hotel, um, stuff like that. And then I think then the year after we're considering maybe a longer trip around the continent. And again, what we've learned is we're not going to bring tons and tons of stuff with us. That is a bad idea. We're not going to bring the tent. We're not going to bring anything like that. We're basically going to just basically wild camp where we can or stay in campsites overnight or whatever and just just stay, excuse me, just stay light. Now that suits us. It's just, that suits us. It's just myself and Vanessa and Christian and he's very easy going for as a 10 year old. And um, so that's our plan. So that's the psychology of the whole thing. So what we're doing is we're kind of lightening the load within the van. Okay, so you can still see me hopefully. Okay, so let's get started. Starting, I may as well start here with the wardrobe. Okay, so the wardrobes, that's the, that, this bag here is the, um, the wraparound, the, um, the wraparound for the pop-up top. That's, that's in that bag as well. So, so we just, I just leave it in the van because it's just easier to cart around. Anyway, I get distracted. This is the wardrobe. So you can see, again, like all we really, we don't really use it in that regard for hanging clothing or anything anything like that. We tend to live out of our bag. Vanessa has used it from time to time. But what we tend to do is store the sleeping bags in it, bits and pieces like that. And then when we are camped up somewhere, what we tend to do is throw loads of, you know, just throw stuff into it. And that's what it tends to be. We'll dump the sleeping bags into it or we're not using them and so on. So, you know, that's what it really is. Bit of a mirror. I think in the new van now, I think it's better. They have lights inside and I think it's a full length mirror. They have a little holder here, which is a good idea. And I think on the new van, you pull this out and again, it's another, ho- it's a, this, the screen here is, has something on it, which I think is a, is a nice touch. And um, we don't have any of that. So we just have to kind of live without. Okay, so that's that. And um, how do I find the lights? Well, these are the old style lights now because the new lights are being replaced with LED. And the LED lights are really um, energy efficient and stuff like that. So that saves on your leisure batteries. But these are fine, you know, you know. They're grand, they light up the van. We have our own little strip here that we have a little funky kind of lighting you might see. So the lights are fine, no issues. We haven't had to replace any bulbs or anything like that and that does the job. Okay, so the fridge. So, just closing that. So what's going on with the fridge? Nothing, the fridge is fine and it's been working fine since we got it. There's been no, no problems with the fridge whatsoever. Well, the only issue we did have is this strut. Okay, so this strut, the nut here came away at one stage. Now I see again in the new design, in the new version of the van, um, they seem to have done away with that strut. And the way the um, the way these countertops have worked is a different system. And I think that's better because that strut was an issue. Now, VW fixed it when it was under warranty. So there's no issue since. And the van has worked, and the, and the fridge has worked out fine. What we did was we got rid of the cage and then we um, we started to use those boxes. So did the, the fridge will be full of those boxes. And re- the reason being, the reason being basically is because, and uh, what we found was when we were loading the van up, the fr- when we were loading the fridge up, what was happening was that all the stuff was getting squashed and Vanessa was having to root through and find things and things were getting damaged and stuff like that as well. So the easiest thing to do is what you, we fit three of those boxes in. Oh, it's just a lid, but they're about like, they are there. What am I saying? Right, so they're there. So what she'll do is she fits three. She'll fit three of those in comfortably. Sometimes she just uses two. And what she'll do, what she does then is she has her own little system, right? So Vanessa looks after all the cooking and so on. So that works out fine. But other than that, the fridge has been fine, right? No problems. No problems there. What I do is I te- what I de- what I do is I tend to leave something when we're not using it. I tend to leave something in here, um, because. 
you can get mildew and stuff in the, in it. So what we try and do is we try to we try to just leave it breed. I leave it open when she's parked up. Okay, moving on. The next thing then is the cooker. The cooker and the, or the hob. So, oops. So, no issues. The new van, the, the, in the T6, they split this, which was a great idea because that's one my, that's my bugbear of this, the size of this thing. So if, if Vanessa's cooking and we're not using the sink, the steam has a tendency to go up and go over. Whereas if this was open, you'd be you'd have less steam coming into the van. What tends to happen is when the, the steam tends to this this surface area here it tends to get a bit damp. Whereas it would go out now. Vanessa would probably say if she was here. It might be a problem actually because the wind blowing in has a tendency to blow on the gas and it causes problems. So it's a bit of a mixed thing. I think I prefer it split, but that's that's just that. Okay. So how are the hobs working out? No problems. These are fine. Vanessa finds it a little bit fiddly to light them from time to time, but I think that's just Vanessa's technique. Um, she just struggles, you know, trying to get the little the little clicker here to work. But other than that. No problems. We've been using them. You've seen in a lot of our videos. Um, Vanessa uses them all the time, so she doesn't seem to have any issues. And you know, they've had a fair, a bit of use. Okay, so the sink. So we don't really use it. Like it, it's like it's it's handy. It's a great way to store water, and um, you know, and obviously if you want to rinse things and stuff like that. But the fact that the water is cold, what Vanessa has a tendency to do, she's a tendency to boil water. And she uses this little thing to clean things. Um, we tend not to use it. It's uh, just one of those things. Now I know, like it's wet and stuff like that. And she will rinse things off it, and, you know. So, but we, we we haven't had any we haven't had really any real trouble problems with it. So just um, the what's my thinking on that? The I was. I'm always a little bit nervous that what happens is that if you cook anything, and so we tend to have burgers and things like that when we're away in the van. My nerve, my fear is that what happens is grease will get down inside and block the pipes and bits and pieces like that. So we tend not to do that. So we clean the frying pans really thoroughly, clean the plates. Vanessa will use hot water and wash the liquid and so on. And I have a tendency. What I'll do is find a shore or something like that. Or we'll just, you know, it's environmentally okay. Like washing up liquid is not dangerous to the environment in any way. So we have a tendency to pour it away. Um, assuming we're camping wild. But if we're in a campsite, we'll bring everything up and wash it in the, um, we'll wash it in the, you know, in the um, campsite facilities. Okay, so that's that. So it's a bit of a mixed thing. If it was hot water, it'd be more versatile, but it's not. And... Um, Again, I'm nervous about blocking up the sink and stuff like that. So we have a tendency. I think I've, I think I've, I've frightened Vanessa into not using it too much. But I think uh, it is it is handy. It is useful. I mean, obviously, you have to have it in a camper van of this style. But I hear people maybe they do wash their pots and pans and the stuff goes down into it and they don't seem to have any issues like that. But I'm always a little bit nervous. I think if I was washing something out, I would definitely clean it and maybe give it a light rinse and stuff like that. And I think that's one of those things that will come on over time. We'll understand over time. Okay, what's next? So again, I think you know. Oops. The again with the sink, it's fine. It is. This is obviously a useful, very useful little piece of kit. You know, uh, we've never had any technical issues with it. The sink has worked fine all the time, and um, we tend to. I will top up the tanks and bring water with us. Uh, sometimes what we do is we use the water that's in the tank to save us carton bottles of water around. Uh, and what we'll do then is we'll use it, we'll boil it. And obviously, like I said, Vanessa will use it then for washing pots and pans. Or what we'll do is we'll use it for uh, cups of tea and so on. Okay, so that is that. Now, the last time I did this video, I, oops, the last time I see, that's the thing about this. It's so heavy. That's the thing I hate about it. And I think the new system as well, these new catches, these, these are the old style catches, which I don't think are as good. The new ones. You just push it and it pops open and I think that's good. And these are the things that tempted me into getting a new van. But anyway, that's on hold. So what's all those what what are all those wires there you might ask? Okay, so what we do is the dash cam is powered off here. So the cable runs up in and around and then down here and I have this guy here plugged in. And there's a load of different ports on here. A lot of different ports, um, cigarette lighter ports and USB ports, and it just plunks into here. And what we do then is we char we power the um, dash the dash cam off that, and um, 
there's no, you know, that's fine. There's no problems. You know, the, the only thing is remember to plug it out because there's always little, there's a little LED on here. And if you leave it sitting for a month or so, that even though it's a very small amount of energy, it will slowly but surely run down your battery. Um, so it's always remembering to, to unplug it. This is the power to the, the little LED lights here. And um, I think that's basically that. So, so let, me, let me just have a look at this to show you what's going on here. So there you go. So, so no, yeah, it's nothing, nothing spectacular. This little plug, it's very handy. It's you, you can't quite see it there, but it's the European style style plug. So you have to have an adapter. And I don't know if that's a mistake or an oversight with the van, because I think in some videos I've seen that they have the UK style plug in there. But we have the adapter and it works fine. And I'll go on about how we manage this. So that's fine. That's fine. And then what we have down here is you have the um, the other power source that's the um, like a converter and what that does is basically it gives you more power when you're charging things like your laptop so this this socket here actually the one here this socket here works when you're when you're on power in a campsite and that's fine ne never any issues with it and then this one here basically works off the larger battery so what I have charging here and my drone batteries and bits and pieces like that as well so if you're into if you have a camera or if you need to charge. So basically that plug will allow you to charge, oops, that plug will allow you to charge um, items such as these things when you're not plugged into a campsite, which is very handy, very useful. Comes in handy all the time for me for charging drone batteries and things like that as well. Because that's, I suppose that's the other thing as well. Over time, the channel, sorry, the channel has changed over time in that it's gone from these kind of instructional kind of videos to being um, more about the trips and stuff like that as well, which is the whole purpose of the van is to, to travel. Funny, I was in, she was serviced the other day and the guy who was talking to me, the service agent, said to me, and do you take it for journeys and trips and all? And I was kind of looking, kind of going, yeah, of course. <laughs> Like, what's the point in buying it and then having it sitting on your driveway or using it as a as a as your kind of regular car? We do go on trips, so I was telling him where we'd been and stuff like that, and he was kind of going, oh, "Okay, okay, you know," and I was kind of going, "Yeah, of course, that's the whole idea, the whole purpose of it." So the videos on the channel have slowly but surely turned into those kind of videos. They're less instructional because we've kind of gone through everything, and um, obviously, if we got a new van, I'd redo all those videos again. Um, you know, just to take people through it. But I think we'll hang on and see what the T7 is like and that'll be in a few years. Because the van is four years old, we are coming up to our last, this is our last year of payments. So come next January, I think we'll be making the last payment, January or February, whatever way that works out, we'll be making our last payment and then we'll fully own the van. Um, so it won't be like a five-year-old car that's had a tough life. It's had a very easy life. So it'll be, it's a good asset and I think they maintain their value. I'm babbling. Okay, let's go on with something else. And while I'm here, so we may as well stick on this side. Okay, so the presses, oops, the presses. Um, again, very straightforward. I think they've changed these catches on the new one. I think they're just easier to use or something like that. So, um, you know, some stuff has moved into this press. That's why it's a bit difficult to open. That's, but generally speaking, what I'd say is no problems. The new van, um, they're lit inside. And I think that is a really, really nice touch. What I've done is I've added this thing. So I'll just show you that again. You, might, you can see what I've done is I've added my own. I've added my own lighting. So just, it works better in the dark, obviously, that you see. So that's just, they're just LED strips. But, the, and the, the, the idea, the concept, the concept that that came to me from when I saw the new van being updated. So I thought that was very handy. But apart from being, apart from being small and a bit cramped, uh, Vanessa hates them, but apart from being small and cramped, they are what they are. They're fine. And they're just presses. We put these things in. And the reason we put them in is exactly for that reason, because what tends to happen is that it just helps you compartmentalize them a little bit. Um, otherwise, what tends, what tends to happen is tin, you tend to root through them. So this way you can kind of lift these things out. Um, but Vanessa hates this system. She just absolutely hates this system. But anyway, there's no getting away from it. This guy here is one of these adapters, you know, with multiple plugs and things like that. 
and I use this so what I do is I plug it into this when we're on power and what I have then is at least then we have four sockets so when we first went away you would only have the one and now what we have is we have when we plug this in you can see there's what four there so that gives you four, four power sockets and it's fine like we have from time to, we have very seldomly tripped the van we've tripped the switch in the van but what typically tends to happen is you tend to trip the switch in the campsite um, and we've done that a few times and if you trip the power in the campsite when you're plugged in the trip switch is usually somewhere in and around where you've plugged your van in and it's only a matter of tripping the switch back out we've rang I think we called the campsite twice in separate campsites and said the power has gone out and some guy walks down and flips the, flips the switch. So what tends to happen is we'll trip, we'll trip switches if you have too many things on the go. Um, I think they're obviously they're rationing the amount of power they're given to you and um, they don't want you drawing on too much power and so they're obviously, I find that they're very easily tripped. But what we do is we tend to have those plugged in and that means then we can have various things charging and it's just that little bit easier or it's just easier to get to as well you can have that sitting on here as opposed to constantly trying to root down the back there and find things um so that's that and that, that so that works out fine so like i said the presses are you know they're a bit they're a little bit of a pain um vanessa like i said hates them that's her toaster so you can, when you're on power, you can use a toaster. This plug here wouldn't be capable, I don't think, of. You have to have, you have to be on power. Um, I don't think that would work. And, um, you know, we've all our typical drawer of bits and bobs and all that kind of stuff, you know. So that's what we have. So you can see the light there. If I turn off the light, you can see it's just a little bit. It's grand in the day, but at night time. So that's, this is the adapter. This is, this is an adapter that goes into here that plugs in there and then that way then that gives us UK style um, a, a UK style socket okay so this is what Vanessa hates this is what Vanessa hates about these this the fact that access is blocked and you can push the seat back further but the problem is when you have a boot full of stuff you know, you can't quite push it back and you can see. So look, this is Vanessa's system. I come in and try to tidy it from time to time, but really all I'm doing is I just irritate her because she has some kind of system where she knows where everything is. Those knobs that you can see up there, um, those knobs that you can see up there, that's the gas, it should be off. Um, so this one, you turn it and it, it kills the power, it kills the gas going to the hob. That's that. And then, I won't pull everything out, but in the back here, in here is the connections for draining, um, for draining the tanks. So it's just a matter of basically reaching in and draining the tanks, right? So very straightforward. You just open them and you'll hear the water draining out. And so never had any problems with that. The only time I was, I was kind of nervous was then we got a heavy snow a couple of years ago and I was nervous the van was sitting and I thought the tanks might crack or something like that. But they never did. They never did, thankfully. Okay, so anything else in here? Okay. I may as well do the thing that drives me mad as well, I think, is the seat covers. You know, this material, it stains very easily. I got to a lot of trouble trying to clean it. I should cover them, as people keep saying, but I just, I have a bit of a mental block on it. Block. But the seats do stain very easily. They stain, and then when you clean them, they have a tendency to get water stains on them, which is very irritating. This stuff here, this white stuff that you can see, is the cleaner that I was using. You know, what I try and use is some kind of carpet cleaner. But, you know, they're not too bad at the moment, but you can see they do. this color does stain. So when we were mocking up the pricing for the T6.1, I went for a dark interior. Okay, that is that. If you're familiar with the van, you'll know that this is the table that you can use outside, right? So it's very straightforward. I won't bother taking it out. But the van, what you do basically is you pop it out of here. It's very simple. You just push this thing and it pops out. And then you can put the table outside. No issues with that. So I won't go on about it. It's fine. Um, putting it in is a little bit fiddly. But other than that, it's fine. Never any problems. Um, the blinds. They're okay. 
you know they're very straightforward they're a little bit delicate they can be a little bit fussy you can you know if you push them up the wrong way they can get a little bit kinked but other than that they're fine and they do the job well that's, that's that's the thing what we did have to do is this pillar cover here when we got the van first was out of alignment and um VW had to fix it. it was the last thing they did for us before it was out of warranty and um, my understanding is that they I was watching a video today my understanding is that they've changed the mechanisms for these windows and the new vans and apparently they're easier to use which and it's they're just a better design I'd be curious to see what that means um, but they are I'm always nervous that I'm going to break them somehow I don't know what it is it just feels like I'm going to break them um, they just seem kind of very they're very simple design and very clunky we haven't had any issues with them but they just feel so I think if they did have some kind of new or more user friendly design I think that that would be a good thing okay moving on I've stuck these little things here they're just handy because you just don't seem to have enough places to hang things and I put these little S hooks here so I'll throw a hat there or a coat or something fine that's the aircon control for in the rear no problems there works very well Christian loves that he loves having access to that because Christian has a tendency to like it cold we tend to like it warm and my understanding again is that they've changed how these seats are designed these pockets at the back because they are not they're not great and um so I think they've changed the design of that, which is a good thing. But again, generally speaking, we tend to kind of throw things into it and tend to forget about it and so on. I've I've used this one here and it has, um, you know, all bits and bobs in this of it. All stuff that we use, these fly swats are very handy. Uh, we do have a tendency to use them, the odd screwdriver, a couple more hooks, a bit of, you know, sun creams and bits and pieces of GoPro. You can just see, I tend to leave my seat very far tilted back if you're wondering why. So that's that. So in the configuration it is now is, the tr is how we tend to drive and we're tr dri um, it tends to be how we, when we are going on a trip. So you can see here these things are all uh, charging. That's my tripod. If you, you might be wondering what the cushion is for. The cushion is where I leave this camera. The camera sits on that cushion. And it's meant to be only a temporary thing, but the camera has become a or the, 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 the cushion has become a permanent fixture and the camera just sits there and it just means then when we're driving along the camera is very accessible and then it doesn't get bounced around it sits on that it has its own little cushion which is very handy okay so i'll jump into the front front the armrests fine um they're just if you don't know how to use them you've tends you put them into position and, and move this little ratchet a uh, little locking nut and it tends to lock them in different positions it's okay it's just a funny old it's just a funny old setup um it works fine but it's just a bit strange because when you're trying to go what how does it when you don't know at first you're kind of going how does this work but if you do this and then rotate this it'll lock it in position so trying to what i tend to have is i like them very evenly balanced so what i do is you know when i'm driving along i tend to try and get them so that I don't feel one's higher than the other. But they're okay. But they are very comfortable. That's Vanessa's seat. These pockets in the side. Uh, no problems with those. They work fine. Glove box. Very small. Jammed with stuff. Again, probably need a bit of a declutter. I took a lot of Vanessa's stuff out of her drawer because I'm driving along at rattles. And it just kind of sits in there. But that's no problem. Okay, that's that's issue. The radio has worked fine. And we have the Dyn Audio system, which I don't think they're doing anymore. I couldn't see it as being orderable. Um, it's very good, very expensive, uh, a bit of a indulgence, but I just think it's 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 excellent. And it does what it's supposed to do, great sound out of it and stuff like that. But they don't seem to have it anymore. And interestingly, <laughs> one of the, or ironically, now what they've done is they've changed the van. So one of the things that drives me mad is I wanted to listen to the system, but when you're when the engine's off. It switches off after half an hour because it runs after battery engine. And now in the new vans, they've changed it so it'll switch to take power from the leisure battery, which is brilliant. But now they don't do the Dyne audio system. So you're kind of going, like, you know, I don't understand. But it would be great if I could get that rewired somehow to be powered off the leisure batteries. That would be fantastic. So that way I could run it um, because we do have a little small speaker. But that's just one of these little things. It's a little bit of a pain with these guys. Okay. So... The radio, so the radio and the system works fine. Uh, we don't, we don't have the sat nav. What I have is the TomTom -tom sat nav up there, and that TomTom -tom sat nav, it's fine. Look, it does the business. It's not a great sat nav. Um, it's just not great. 
for lots of reasons <laughs> that I won't go into. But I just don't. It's, I'm just not happy with it as a sat nav. But um, it's one of those for life bat, uh, maps and everything like that. So we're basically going to have to use it forever. Okay. So <clears throat> the heated seats are lovely. It's definitely a very good feature to have. I would I would recommend that you get the heated seats. It's very it's brilliant if you're out and it's been it's a bit of a cold day. Um, I would say to use the heated seats. Um, the air conditioning obviously essential. It's fine. Um, these little locker things fine. I sit my phone in here, and then what we've done is I've I've added in this. I've added in these guys, and where I can't see what I'm doing. Pointing at. Okay, yeah, these guys. So I've added in these. So we have four. The, you know, so we can charge extra phones and bits and pieces like that. So that's that's quite handy. And these two, I'll explain what the, basically what I'll do is I'll finish here. This is fine, handy cup holder. It's you know it's grand bits and pieces in there. And then there's the other. Then there's another kind of a bottle holder under there that you can chill. And then fuses are kept in behind there. Okay, so that's that's that. Now, what are these for? These little doodads. You see, I'm, I made the mistake. When I got the van, I didn't opt for a reversing camera. So when I when I turned them off, that's the reversing camera. That was a mistake. Um, now it comes as standard apparently, typically. But you would definitely need a reversing camera. So there's no point in going on about it because it's standard now in the vans. But I know because I got a new Passat, and it's and it's the first reversing camera I've ever had. Excuse me, that was fit. And I have to say, it is um, it is very good. It is brilliant. It's a great aid. What happened was, I was reversing the va the van one day in a gar in a shopping centre, and these two ladies had basically, while I was reversing, pushed a trolley in behind me, and they were unloading the car. And I didn't the first the first I knew they were behind me was when I heard one of them scream, and uh, because I was right on top of her, I didn't hit her or hurt her or anything like that, but it frightened me. And I said, look, I need a reversing camera for this thing, because the sensors were going off. But what they had done was, while well, I was reversing, even though I was reversing, which quite dangerously what they did was they, they kind of ignored me. Rather than wait 30 seconds and let me reverse and pull out, what they did was they decided to squeeze in between me and the reversing. And, you know, so thankfully nothing happened. But it scared me and I said I would get the reversing camera. So absolutely total essential. And it's powered out of here. Okay, so that's so what I do is I, you know, I could have it wired separately into one of these things, but I just leave it as two, and I push the two of these. One powers the camera, and one powers the monitor, and it comes on. No issues with that. Okay, but you don't have to worry about it because the new one, the new one, new one then um, has it permanently. Okay, so then we have our dash cam, uh, which is a next space dash cam, and we have it as long as we have the van. I did a video on it. I don't think it's a great video. People, A few people have complained, saying to me that it's a rubbish video. And I'd say it is. It's one of the first videos I ever did. But that it is very good, and we run it all the time. And like I said, it is powered now out. The power cable goes up here and across and into the back. And um, it works fine. Uh, it's very handy. We've never had any trouble with it. Um, the this, this, can, this can come away a little bit. So what this is, this is a kind of like, um, it's a kind of putty. Um, that what it does is it permanently bonds into any kind of shape. Uh, you can see I made this thing here, right, for the cable out of it. So you see this cable because the cable is loose. So what I've done is I made it. So what it is, it's kind of a, it's kind of like putty, but it solidifies and sticks and s stays in this shape. So you can see. So that's what I did, and a little bit left over, and I permanently bonded this to the windscreen. Now I think, look, if the windscreen broke and needed to pull it away, it's only a matter of basically putting a blade in there and boom, she'll pop away, no problem, I hope. Um, but you do need, the dash camera is very handy and uh, I would recommend that you get one, you know, just to be safe. Um, but we've no issues with it. The, the only problem we ever had was one time, interestingly, was it came back and the SD camera in it, not the SD camera, the SD, the SD card in it was somehow, had somehow stopped working. Now, VW had had the van for a couple of weeks and they were doing lots of test drives and everything like that. And this thing comes on when the van's powered up. <laughs> so whatever they did, whatever they did, they didn't want to seeing what it was it was recording because somehow when we got it back, the uh, card had stopped working, interestingly. They said they'd replace it, but we didn't bother. Okay. Um, this is the system for controlling the pop-up roof and the fridge. So it's only a matter of how, how we're doing that for light. Um, this just turns on the fridge. This turns on the heat, the heat, no problems. I won't go into it if you're familiar with the vans, um, it's fine. So if I push this button, the fridge will automatically come on and then you can turn this button here and it controls the heat. 
uh, controls the cold. And then this one here turns on the heater. And again, the same idea. So this is your control panel for your heater and your fridge. And it's your control panel for your pop-up roof. Okay, so no issues. Um, the, the thing, the new design, the new design has is that is slightly different. It's more, it's a, 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 a it's touch screen control panel is my understand, my understanding. And uh, the one thing that the new van ha the new van has, it assists you with leveling. It, it doesn't do anything. Like air suspension would be great in these vans if it automatically leveled for you, but it doesn't. But it does have a little indicator, which is very handy because one of the things that caused a lot of strife for myself and Vanessa, and I'm just looking, was when we were trying to level the van. We just, <laughs> we would, it would cause arguments. Um, it just would. It's just one of those things that myself and Vanessa just cannot communicate correctly when it comes to leveling the van. I'm just trying to find. I'm just trying to find something here. We just tend to have arguments about it, and um, but we've learned over time not to. So what we do is we have this little guy here, and what I tend to do is throw it somewhere. Now, you, over time with experience, you can kind of, you can sense when the van is leveled, um, you can get a feeling for it, um. And you can kind of go, yeah, that, that feels level and we don't bother. But sometimes we, we do need it and we have this little guy here. And what I tend to do is I tend to put it somewhere on the floor and it gives us a guide and um, it tends to show us or we'll, we'll put it on the countertop over there and it gives us, it just helps us because leveling the van is one of those things. You're either going to be brilliant at it, bri brilliant at it which we're not, and um, or it can be a little bit tricky, which it apparently is for us. Okay, so that's that, that new system where it'll show you is great because if you're trying to figure out and you can see something here as opposed to trying to figure out, like, is the van level? That is a good system, you know. Um, okay, back to this. That's obviously, that's the, the light for the doors and so on. I have a tendency to leave it off um, for some reason. I just think, you see, when the van's sitting... I tend to leave it off because if I'm open the door, it's just to preserve the engine battery as much as possible. Okay, so that's it. They're just the lights here, no problem. These are the these are the, the just the glasses holder. Very straightforward, very basic. Um, then we have the the um, the rear view mirror that dims. It's the lights and whatnot package, right? And it just automatically dims. Very straightforward, no big deal there. And then over here, you have the blinds. So, the blinds, we've had, we'd had, well, this one has been fine. There's been never any issues with this one. But that one there tends to, it doesn't tend to go back into its system. I won't pull it out now, because it's a bit of a palaver. Well, but you can see the way it's fraying, right? So we said that to VW, but we forgot to get it fixed before she was out of warranty. But for some reason it's fraying. And also it has a tendency not, it's a tendency not to house itself. So when you're pulling the blind out and putting the blind back, you know, you just need to take your time with it. For some reason this one, see, it's not frayed. It's fine. And it just seems to, it just seems to, it's just more sure about going back in. This one seems to be a lot misaligned now. I, I'm assuming it must be something to do with how it's on the roller or something that's inside. But we're out of warranty now, so we have to live with it. What else have we got here? Um, let me just see. Lights, no issues. Um, I find using the fog lights a little bit of a palaver. On the new Passat, it's just two buttons, front and rear, which is very handy using this system here is sort of a that kind of push-pull thing and I can never quite get my head around how that works but anyway so I know when they are on but I just don't like it it's sort of that's off auto whatever and then I think yeah I can see the fog lights are lighting up I can see it there okay so that's the fog lights anything else in here the dash or not the dash. The steering wheel is fine. We haven't had any issues after four years of use with any of these buttons here. It's fine. It's a nice comfy one. I've seen the new one. It has flattened here, which is a good idea because when you push this forward, if this is flat, you can push the seat in this direction. So I think it's better that this is flatter. The automatic gearbox, no problems. Uh, again, I would, I would highly recommend it. The, the reason... The reason I'd highly recommend the automatic gearbox is simply because um, we've gone for really, really, really long drives. Like I think we drove the longest continuous drive I did was 1800 kilometers. And, um, you know, having the gearbox 
as automatic is fantastic, not having to change gears. I know it's a personal choice and stuff like that, but I de definitely recommend that you get the automatic. And it has been mechanically fine with us. It's very smooth, no problem whatsoever in that regard. Um, and then we have the um, cruise control, and then we have the, um, I always forget this, not automatic, adaptive cruise control. Okay, so we have adaptive cruise control. Again, a fantastic piece of kit. And I think it's I think it's standard on the new van, and I think it's becoming standard in more and more cars. Um, but it is very good. I was driving in fog recently, and, you, and the fog is very heavy. But it can see through the fog, and it, it you can see it slowing down before you could you could see cars. But also again, driving on the autostradas in Italy and the motorways in France and all that kind of stuff, you just flick it on the car. They're very good over there on the continent. I find at sticking to. They'll they'll drive for the 130, you know, for 100 kilometers, and uh, you can just lock onto the one in front and follow in behind, and it just means then your feet can rest, and you you're just a bit bit more rested. So the combination of the automatic gearbox and the adaptive cruise control is fantastic. Is there anything else? Because I know I forgot the um, pop up bed. So this thing slides back. I suppose keeping in mind, I'm trying to highlight issues with the van. So the bed is fine. Um, but this thing we've noticed once or twice has a tendency to just to kind of move itself back. Now, it's locked in place now. And I don't know what causes that. I don't know whether it's a particular road, shakes it loose, it tends to come back. Not Now, not to exaggerate it, but it's only been a couple of times it has gone back. But um, it's just something I noticed because I saw a video of someone one time that there has kept opening all the way back. Now, if, it is not pro if it's not properly in position, it will because of the vibrations of the road, it will slowly but surely move itself backwards. The bed upstairs, I'm not going to open up the bed, but the bed upstairs I find uncomfortable. Um, the new bed in the new van has these new little kind of plates that you lie on, and it, you know if they're saying it's better, then good, because it needs to be. I don't find the bed up there comfortable. It takes a bit of getting used to. I find it a little bit hard. So we have sleeping bags, and what I have a tendency to do is bring a duvet and you know, or lie on it, or some kind of mattress or something like that. I just don't find it comfortable, but it's one of those things you get used to it over time, I think. Uh, but I just don't find it comfortable. But once the pop-up roof is up, um, it works well, and um, we've had we don't we haven't had any trouble with the canvas apart from the fact that it is not very windproof and it's not very rainproof. Um, in that if anything touches the side, it'll draw water in. And it's, it, it lets in a lot of light. So now what we have is we have the pusser screen. I always struggle with the name on it for some reason. But that's what we have. And it's a wraparound that goes around. So if you're if you're considering buying a van, or if you have one already, you I would recommend that you get some kind of screen first. Either you can get the inter internal ones or the external ones. Now, we've loads of videos on the channel. Watch them. That's why I don't need to kind of show you these things. If you root around the channel, you'll find the videos. But it is very good, and having the wrap around is very good. It cuts down on the wind. It's definitely warmer. It cuts down on the noise. It cuts down on the light. It's more comfortable, and um, it just makes it more pleasant up there, right? The, the only downside is you have to put it on and take it off every time you want to use it or something like that. So it's only a minor thing, but it's very good. Um, I see in Mercedes, they have a skylight in the roof, and I think that's that's a really winning idea for me. It would, it would would We'd nearly consider flipping to Mercedes. Well, I would anyway, just for that. But anyway, there's nothing else. There's plenty of sockets. That, well, probably not enough USB sockets, but there is one. There's, the lights are easier to manage, so it's very straightforward. The new van, which is a nice touch, you can open up the whole thing and you can sit up there with your feet out and have a look out. And I think that's a really, really nice touch. And again, something I would consider getting the new van for. But as Vanessa pointed out to me, she said, we tend to have that purser screen up all the time. <laughs> So she's like, you won't need that pop-open window. And I was going, well, we don't have it all the time because when we were in Italy, we definitely didn't. And then she's going, yeah, but you couldn't have it open because you'd be eating alive with the bugs at night. And you're kind of going, okay. But the idea being, if you're rocked up to a beat somewhere, it would be just nice. You know, it's just a nice thing. It's just a nice touch. Anyway, so that's that. So, I always forget stuff. I always forget stuff. But, you know, uh, we didn't. Hopefully I haven't. Okay, so this thing here, this is the, I think, the mic for the voice, the voice system that if you talk in here, they can hear you in the back. I think it's channeled through this, to, to, the, to the speakers in the back. We didn't get it as an option. Um, so, Christian, you can hear people in the back better and they can hear you better. Um, we didn't get it. 
So I don't know. Is there anything else? No. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, stay, I'll stay with the interior, but I'll jump in and do the back. I'll just, I'll just open the... And, uh, actually, something I forgot. So what we did was we put carpet down. So that's the actual surface. And we put this carpet down on top. Now the new van, the new van has this lovely timber effect, which is really, really nice, which means you probably wouldn't put down the carpet. But then I heard somebody saying that um, it's very noisy, it can be cold and so on. So we're very happy with the carpet. I, I put that carpet down, it was cheap as chips, and I put it down, I got the carpet from Ikea, cut it out, laid it, because I was gonna buy the more expensive carpet and actually do it properly. But in the end, I just never got around to doing it and it does the business. Okay, so I leave that mat there. The mat is there, A, just for effect. It just looks nice. And also it just means um, cleaning our feet and so on. And um, that little guy over there in the corner, that's a moisture absorber. And I did a video on that. And that is, um, that is very handy. Now, some people, interestingly, some people, interestingly, sorry about the weird position. Some people, interestingly, were laughing at it, saying it was rubbish. Uh, but I find it's very good. Uh, you know, it does... I think it definitely keeps the van drier. Um, so that's just my opinion. Okay. That's the heater. The heat, when the heat is on, the heat comes out of here and another place over there. And I find the heater um, very effective. I made this little modification there so we can have a little torch. Again, these are things that you learn over time. You definitely will need some kind of decent torch. And um, that's that. And then we have inside the van or inside here so you can see Vanessa keeps all these things so people use these things in different ways and this is how we this is how we have used ours and again no issues with that and then there's that locker up there which I hate and um, I often find it's very difficult to open and it's it's not great I don't know what we just keep bits and pieces and I won't bother opening but I find I don't like that locker it's it could be better designed and hopefully it is so I'll stick with the interior and then I'll do the exterior so this is the back. Tent, portaloo, absolutely essential. Levelers, essential. So you'll need levelers, you'll need a porta potty. That's a little fold away barbecue. Again, we've done a video on it, I think, somewhere. Very good. That's the tent, which is great. For water, porcelain screen, bits and pieces, empty bags. So we tend to store them in here. Vanessa uses this in the tent. It's basically a pop-up table. That's what she uses football essential this is the locker in the back so we tend to keep coats and all sorts of stuff in here again they've changed this design i think they've given I, it looks like this is bigger and the way the door works because this is this is rubbish i this is a i find this rubbish this is handy i think i stuck that mirror in there myself i can't remember but it is what it is it's cramped you can put things in it it comes in handy, you know, like I have a shovel in here, a snow shovel, luminous jackets, a hammer, thing for carrying fuel, all that kind of stuff. I did put a little light in there, but I don't think it works anymore. Oh, it is. It is. So, anyway, so under here, under here you have where your, so your, your switches are in here for your, um, your electrics, if they trip, so no issues. That's where the um, access to the gas is. So we have the van, we have the van four years. Sorry. So we have the van four years and we've done a fair bit of cooking in it and we've had to replace the gas bottle only recently. So it was going for a long time and I did a video on it. Uh, I thought it was gonna go last year, but we got four years out of it. Uh, now Vanessa would remind me, we probably didn't really use it a whole lot for the first year. Um, because I was a bit again, I was not keen on cooking in the van. I thought it was going <laughs> to, I thought it was going to ruin the van. But it doesn't. You can cook in the van. It doesn't leave any odors. It doesn't leave any smells. We do have those sprays that kind of deodorize the van, and I use those a lot. But other than that, there's never any kind of odors in the van. And um, the only thing is to watch if you're cooking big pots or something like that. You can you can have a tendency to build moisture up in the van, and and, and uh, that's the only thing that bothers me. But and the van can get a bit kind of damp, not damp inside, but it can get humid. So that is a bit of a problem. Okay. Then you have the shower. So that's the shower connection. That's the shower point. Uh, so it was an optional extra, and it is handy to have. I'm glad I do have it because I just think you know for kind of 
what's going on here it is handy in that I'm you know I did I have used it a few times to shower but the water's cold and if it, if it you know and if it's like ambient temperature three degrees outside it's very cold so what I have a tendency to use it for is when we come back from the beach rinsing sand off things or washing pots and pans and stuff like that as well you know we have a tendency to use it if we were somewhere very warm and the water in the van in the storage tank was pleasant enough then you could have a shower with it so I would only get showered in, in emergencies okay what else have we got so that's the bed the bed is fine Christian, has, Christian tends to use the downstairs bed mainly uh, you know again watch videos on how you so what you, what you have to do is pull the seat, pull this, the bench there forward. You pull, you pull on a cord, and then you flatten it down. There's better. You'll see videos on it. I won't go into the details. It is fine. Is it comfortable? Yeah, it's it's perfectly flat. We got that big spongy mattress, and it is fine. Um, myself and Vanessa tend to use the upstairs bed, and Christian tends to sleep downstairs. But I think. We're probably going to flip that at some stage. It was only because when he was small, we just, you know, it's just handier. And before we got up, before we got the Porsche screen and the sleeping bags and everything, it tended to be cold upstairs. So to keep him warm. But I think we're going to flip that around now, maybe start us sleeping downstairs again. So that that's that. Okay. So anything else? Anything else? In here, in here, that's where the um, that's where the seats are kept that go with the picnic table. No issues. Okay, so I think. My view is that that's probably all the... That's enough now of the, I think, the interior. Let's get this darkened. That's enough about the interior. And I think before my battery goes, what I'll do is I'll do the exterior now. Start, might as well start at the back, seeing as I'm here. Okay, so what's going on? What is going on? Bumper, fine. Lights, fine. Good lights. No issues, no bulbs have gone or anything like that. No problems with them whatsoever. That's the little camera I added myself. It can get a little bit grubby, but I added that myself, and it works fine. The proper camera will be mounted under here, and it will give you a better view. This is cheap as chips from Amazon, and it does the business. Um, so that's that. The bike rack, the bike rack is fine. The only thing I'd say with the bike rack, we tend not to we tend not to cycle a whole lot these days. So the bike rack is a little bit redundant, but I'd rather have it uh, and then, then, then need one. And, it, and when we did, sorry now, the uh, SD camera, the SD camera failed. So yeah, so we we've a ten, we we've a tendency not to uh, we have a tendency not to cycle. So um, so what we use what we use it for now is we have that bag, and we use it as a way of storing extra bits of pe bits and pieces now. You see, this is the thing. What happened was over time, slowly but surely, um, we, we just started carrying more and more and more stuff with us. So we ended up needing, you know, where the van was full, then we got a bag for the back. We had, we had a roof box at one stage. The whole van was just absolutely totally wedged with stuff. So now what we've done is we've started to kind of come back to basics and so on. So that's what I tend to, that's what we have a tendency to use it for. I do have a video on that bag and the bag, the bag is very handy. This is a ladder that I built myself to, when I did have the roof box. You see the roof box is gone. So the reason I, the reason I got rid of the roof box was because a couple of things. One, we were carrying stuff in the roof box that we weren't using. Okay, so that was the first thing. The second thing was, um, it was burning up fuel. I saw once I took it off, once I took the fuel, once I took the roof box off the van, the van became more economical to drive. And the third thing was, we were limited access wise to certain places. We would arrive up and we couldn't get in. You know, so like multi story car parks, going to certain forests or something like that as well, all of a sudden it's like, you can't get in because we had this roof box. So we've taken the roof box off, we've kept it in storage in the house in case we ever need to have the. Um, use it again and it's a few hundred quids worth as well so i'm not going to just throw it away and discard it and um, we could sell it but i think it's handy to have okay so that's the main thing so, so from a kind of psychological perspective we got rid of the roof box because we just don't need it anymore and the other reasons is that, as i outlined okay so what have we got that's the awning again i think the awnings are standard now is my understanding so very good that they are brilliant piece of kit and we do use it so before we got the the, the port before we got the tent we used to bring this out more 
and then we used to sit on the needles and when we would set up it was kind of like an extension of the van then once we got the tent we tended not to use it as much but what we're reverting back to doing now is we're reverting back to we're going to use this more because we don't plan on bringing the tent with us as much as we used to for obvious reasons now that looks like it's peeling to me so that could be an issue looks like it's peeling doesn't it but anyway so the alloy wheels no issues we're still on our first set of brakes and we're still on our first set of tires after four years and 31 and a half thousand kilometers okay but let me just show you when she was in for her service the today the minimum tire drip the minimum tire depth is 1.6 mil and we're at 3.2 so he's saying we need to look at getting new tires so 31,000 kilometers coming up on 32,000 kilometers actually we're still on our first set of tires touch wood we haven't had any punctures they're a fine set of tires plenty of grip but I have started to notice that they are getting down now to being and I will replace them the only thing is they're 200 euro each to replace so um, she was serviced the other day that was she had to she had to get her first because she's four years old now she had to get her first uh, vehicle a commercial vehicle test so you do it what it is is that you do that um after four years because it's a commercial vehicle in ireland so that's like an mot for people in the uk so the van had to get its first test after four years then it gets one test every two years till she's 10 years old and after it's 10 years old she gets a test every year so I had to pay for that so that's 100 euro and then I had to pay for the service which was 260 something so you know VW service isn't cheap and now I'm gonna to have to get new tires and there it's gonna be so they're saying the rear ones are fine but I'll see so it's gonna cost me either another four or eight hundred euro in tires uh, on top of the monthly repayments so you see it's getting to the point now where next year we won't have any payments but we're probably gonna start having to replace bits and pieces in it anyway so that's the that's just a bar I had fitted you know it's one of those kind of it's just for aesthetics really and to protect the van uh, I think they just look nice I remember when I was kind of looking at the vans when I was watching lots of videos on the van I thought it was nice the only thing is I've noticed it has started to corrode I've painted it black again myself but it is starting to corrode with salt in the road and so on so like I said the tires are fine fine big tires the fold up mirrors and they're fold up and they're heated and um, they're fine too and then the side scanning radar uh, I can see it there in the reflection but the, the side scanning radar again the side radar I'm not sure if that's I think it probably is still an optional thing um, but very good I use it all the time especially you know I found that I use it a lot in the continent because they tend to drive a lot quicker, better, but quicker over there. And you can kind of see they come up beside you and they were on the wrong side as well. So I use that a lot, um, especially if there's a lot of rain and everything like that. We did have, we did have windbreakers here, but they were causing a lot of rattling and it drove us mad. So in the end, what we did was in the end, I, in the end, one day in a kind of fit of temper, I took them off because they were just, I was I couldn't believe that they were causing this rattling. They were held on with these little metal clips and they never worked. And what we did is we took them off and I meant to replace them. But what I noticed then on the way home was the noise level from them had dropped. So I found that they were causing a lot of noise. Now we said it in the video and people were saying rubbish, you know, that they didn't cause that much noise at all. But I found that they did cause a lot of noise. So they were gone. The indicators, fine. So she's on her second set of wipers now. They replaced wipers when I got in service the other day. That's the original windscreen, touch wood, it's fine, no problems. The LED lights, they're fine, no problems with those guys either. And um, the only thing that was when we first got the van was that um, we were getting flashed a lot because they were so bright. But um, either people are used to them now because we don't seem to get flashed anymore or VW have adjusted it somehow that it doesn't seem to be blinding people. There must have been something, some issue with the level. I don't know. Maybe it's because they're brand new. Fog lights, fine. Sensors, parking sensors, fine. No issues. Uh, is there anything else? I'll have a look at the engine. Oh, okay. On this side, this is fuel and the um, for fuel and the add blue. So, uh, it's heavy on juice. It is thirsty, but what I would say is that uh, it's not that bad. 
it, look, it is. It is what it is. I mean, it's loaded and full. It's a big, heavy vehicle and so on. It's not. It's never going to be super duper efficient. But it's okay. It's okay. It's manageable. The only thing I would, when I was pricing out the new van, I went for the bigger tank. I would recommend that you get the bigger tank because a 60 litre tank in this thing is just not enough. You're driven mad. 20 litres would just give you that little bit of extra range. The reason I'm shivering is because I think it's only about one and a half or two degrees out here. But anyway, um, what was the same? So yeah, so there's no issues. The Add Blue system, I'm kind of jumping into the engine there a little bit, but we did have a lot of problems and we did do videos on it. Um, there was definitely something wrong with the Add Blue system and I was actually watching it. I was, on the VW forum the other day, I saw that somebody was saying that they're now putting instructions in the glove box to remind people of how to use it. It must be costing them a small fortune in that, um, it must be, just make sure I'm not a, no runny nose. So, um, it must be costing them money because they're having to replace it because I think the system is a bit of a palaver. You see, you, unusually, you can overfill it, which is unusual. If you overfill your diesel tank, I don't think there's any issues, you know, but you can overfill the ad blue system so you have to pay attention to the maximum level it's not like a maximum where they're saying oh the max is this they mean it the maximum is the maximum and uh, you have to be careful you have to be careful with that um so they did and i did videos on it as well and they had to replace the ad blue system or part of it and it cost them a small fortune not us it was all under warranty thankfully but we haven't had any issues with it since thankfully okay the um, darkened glass, absolutely essential, and we've had no issues with that. I highly recommend it. This is the water system. It takes it's, it's fine. Never any issues with it, thankfully. But it's just a bit of an awkward kind of system or something like that. And I see in Mercedes, both of these are covered under a flap, which I think is a nice touch. It just I've often think that hygienically, once we open this and then we're pouring water in, it's just open to the elements. You know, it's you can see how splashed and dirty it is there. Whereas in Mercedes, it's covered. And I just think it's a nicer touch. And then this is power. This is where the power goes in. The only thing you have to be careful of, the only thing you have to be careful of is, um, you just need to make sure it's shut. Because if you don't get it shut, what tends to happen when you're driving, if, you're, if it's not shut, it tends to flap. And I suppose at some stage, it could very easily get broken and damaged. And if you have to replace it, I'm sure it's expensive. Okay. So just a bit on the, um, I've actually, uh, I forgot this the last time as well. So we have the four motion. We have the four motion in the, um, uh, sorry now. We have, we have the four motion in the van. And uh, now it's one of these things, right? You kind of say to you, isn't any good? And I'd say, I don't know, because we've never not had a van without four motion. But what I would say is from driving it, that you know climbing hills driving on very wet roads like this kind of road here crossing fields driving in grass it always feels very sure-footed there's a few times where we've kind of driven onto beaches and things like that and we've never had any trouble with it so what i would say is having the four motion it's an expensive option and it adds a lot of weight to the van as well apparently and it dries up your fuel consumption but I think the four motion is um, I'm happy to have it but I hear a lot of people saying it's not necessary and it's probably not but I think the thing is I think I know for myself long term I think you know if we were driving in snow or something like that because you just don't know where you'll end up with the van in the long term and I think having four wheel drive just gives us those that extra option I'll just show you that's the corrosion as well you can see that. It'll probably have to be replaced at some stage. You can see how it's rusty. You know, and I have painted it. I'll have to... Actually, do you know what? I didn't do this side. So I'll have to clear that off and paint this side. Okay, so I'm just going to open the engine. Or the bonnet, the hood, whatever. A few leaves there from the trees at home. So apart from the Add Blue system, we've had no issues with the engine so far. Um, it's very straightforward and uh, it's it's the larger engine um, the 204 horsepower or whatever it is and uh, plenty of pulling power like I, the one thing I've noticed with the massive engine that like a very powerful engine having 200 horsepower is even with the weight of the van uphill fully loaded with bikes on back no problem whatsoever it, it is a powerhouse and absolute and coupled with the automatic uh, uh, automatic gearbox very easy to drive one thing I did notice people did was they have a tendency to store their cables in here like this and so naturally enough it seemed like a good idea 
So I copied it. It seems like people do use this space. And so I have, this is because this, this cord is just a little bit awkward. And the cart in the back. So it is fine. Um, the only thing is I suppose you have to be careful because it could, like those cables don't look very kind of substantial, if you know what I mean. Like it just, that's the thing I'm always worried about that, you know, it would damage something or anything like that. Just on cables, we originally bought the 50 meter cable. And I've cut it in half since. 25 is fine. Plenty of, plenty of length in 25. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought but I, I just I didn't know anything about um, camping or anything like that. So when we bought the um, van first, I got the biggest I got the biggest uh, cable, but you know it's no good. The only thing we did have was we had, you can see there's some damage. So we went to Germany. And there was mice in the campsite, and they found the um, they found. So I, what I did was set this trap. Uh, but what happened was um, the mice moved in, and they built. They basically overnight built a nest for themselves in the engine compartment. You can imagine the damage they would do. So they um, we were driven mad. What we had to do is we had to put Coca-Cola bottles and stuff to block the gap and basically try and keep them out because every time every time we left we cleaned it out they were starting to bring leaves and what they did was this is there's a sort of there was a carpet carpety material in here and what they did was they basically they tore up all the carpety material and built it built a nest of themselves and um, just looking in here I can see we're getting what looks to be like either snail or sp spider stuff as well you see this is hanging in here you have a tendency stuff can get in and it's always my fear because you see plenty of burnt out cars and it's a bit kind of dirty there I'm not sure how you'd get in there to clean that obviously I have to take this off anyway but other than that the engine has been fine so I think I'll jump back in because you know what it's bleeding freezing out here so just, just one issue actually in relation to these doors um, that you have to be careful of is is basically, it's just outside flying the, flying the drone and it is so cold out. So just one thing with them is that, so if you're in a campsite at night and the point I'm trying to make is be careful because you can lock yourself out of the van very easily. One night I went out and the van was on central locking and I got up and I went out to go to the loo in a campsite and I went off and came back and when I came back I was locked out. Now thankfully the guys are in the van and all they had to do was unlock the van for me. So there's just one of the things you have to be careful of. If the van is on central locking and you open that door and shut it after you, the lock, it automatically locks again. Um, so the two, th the one thing you need to do is you need to unlock the van completely. So I think you need to push the button on the on the driver's door to unlock the van totally, or make sure you brought your key with you. Because that time it happened to me, I thought to myself, "Oh my God, could you imagine if you're wild camping somewhere?" This is what reminded me of it because it's so cold. Imagine at night you hop out of the van, you're wild camping somewhere, you haven't brought your spare key on you, you hop out of the van to take an L tinkle in the trees. And all of a sudden then, you're locked out of the van and it's minus three outside and you're in the middle of nowhere. You know, you could potentially, well obviously you'd smash the window and get into the van, but it could potentially be, um, you know, fatal. A fatal mistake. So, and obviously then if you have to smash your way into the van and if it's raining or snowing or something like that as well, you know, there's the damage and then the risk to the van and so on and so forth. But just the point I'm making is that when you get up at night to get out of the van or whatever, and if the van is again is centrally locked, and you open a door and shut it after you, that that door does lock again. Um, it's just a safety thing. I don't know why they do it. Um, so just make sure when you do, just unlock the van. I think I've covered off everything very thoroughly there, I think. There's no, there's nothing I've forgotten, I don't think. Um, you know, what's the van like to use? It's very good. It's purposeful in that it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Would we want a bigger van with a shower and all those kind of things? Yeah, but the downside is then, 
access to places and so on you know like we've gotten we've gone down some very narrow roads in this thing which is very good that you couldn't do in a bigger van and we do love it over time we have i think we went through a kind of phase where we didn't know anything about camping and we were kind of unsure then we went through a phase of getting to know it then we went through a phase of hating it where we really, really didn't like what we were doing. And we were kind of, I was like, oh, I don't think we're going to go camping anymore. But then we kind of, through trial and error, have kind of learned that we were kind of making mistakes and we were driving ourselves mad. And slowly but surely then, this whole idea now of having less in the van and, and, and you know, I think that's the better way to do it. We try and maintain, or I do anyway, try and maintain the van in, in, in you know, I try and maintain all the surfaces. Vanessa's very good at keeping the cooker clean and all those kind of things. We've, you know, you'll see in other videos, we've separate little small gas cookers that we use outside, which are super handy if the weather is nice. And um, we we probably have a system now. Vanessa will come out and load the van very efficiently. We might go to the shops and get a few extra bits and pieces and stuff like that. Driving it, I'm very comfortable with driving it now. I understand the size of it, how it breaks, how it handles on roads, all those kind of things. Um, camping in it, staying in it is very good. And we understand now when we're traveling around. So that that's a big part of it. I, you know, I can't stress enough how it's not just the van. There's a psychology behind the whole thing um, that you need to kind of understand and get your head around. But once you do, and I think if you come to camping, um, you know, it depends on how chilled out and relaxed you are. Uh, you know, I'd say the more chilled out and relaxed you are, the better. But it has taken us time, but I think we do have a, a good understanding of it now. And we, we do lots of little lots of little nice trips, and then we plan on taking longer trips as well. Um, so the whole idea, again, is always to have the van forever. And um, we'll always keep some kind of van like this, whether it's this one or whether I replace it in a few years to come or whatever we do. We would definitely never go back on not having access to something like this. It is brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. And I think at that, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but it's going to be a whopper. So um, that's that. So if you have any questions, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.